And uh, switching gears to a quant conversation, and our next guest has come along with three stocks to buy. If you know your candlesticks from bars, let's find out what he's buying and why. Jason McIntosh joins us now from motiontrader.com.au here in the studio. Uh, Jason, welcome to Osprey. Thank you for joining us. David, thanks for having me in. Uh, to go and start off with, maybe give us a bit of a background as how you go and make your investment decisions. What's the thesis to go and pick the right stock? So what I'm doing, I'm using, um, using algorithms to, to scan the market. And the, the, you know, look, the great thing about the algorithmic approach is that you can cover so much ground. You can cover so many stocks. So I'm able to cover the, pretty much practically every ASX stock each day. I run the, the data through the algorithms and I'm looking for, looking for trends basically in the market. Okay. And um, to, give you, to give, you, give you a quick analogy, imagine, and, uh, and like the, the big thing is, is that like I'm able to find ideas that I otherwise wouldn't be able to, you know, which otherwise would be pretty hard to find. So analogy, like imagine looking at the you know, clear blue, blue sky and you're looking for a you know, jet aircraft flying over. And now, unless you know exactly where to look or you get lucky, you're not gonna spot it. Um, but now put a vapor trail behind that, behind that aircraft easy spot it straight away. So this is kind of what I'm using the algorithms for. They're, they're looking for a stock's vapor trail. And the vapor trail a stock leaves is momentum. So it's not just an up day or an up week, there's a bit more to it. And, uh, but that's basically the premise of it. You're looking for the momentum in the stock. So no accounting for fundamental analysis. You're just not into that, uh, it's just purely at the algorithm. Yeah, for, from, my, from my approach, mm -hmm. I'm just using the algorithms and relying on, on momentum and then risk management strategies to, to handle each stock. But that said, a lot of people will use the, uh, the momentum-based um, trending triggers to identify the idea and then they'll drill down on the stock and they'll look for what might be driving that momentum. And so it's both, you can do it both ways. Both ways work. There's no holy grail with investing and it's about what works, what sits best with the, uh, with the investor. So Jason, you've got your uh, algorithms out there scanning the market and you've actually come up with three stocks that are on the move and uh, are ticking a couple of boxes right now. Uh, what's mm. one of the other uh, stocks that I know you're looking at right now? Yeah, so look, the, um, the challenge was actually narrowing it down to three stocks to yeah. talk about, because this is the thing. Mm. I'm, I'm getting, I get signals for so many different stocks. Yep. And uh, I look for, for three of the smaller ones. Because you know, the small ones are interesting because you know, stocks where most people don't know the name of, it's, uh, you know, there, there can be some fascinating businesses out there. So the first one is a company called Apium Animal Health. And its uh, market cap is around $88 million. It's not in the all ordinary, so I think that probably takes it off the, the radar for, for most people. And uh, it's a, a veterinarian business. And by that, it's not like the local vet, it's, uh, it's regionally focused. So they, they look after the domestic animals, but then a big part of the business is, is the, you know, the farm animals, the, the, the horses, the cattle, uh, sheep, poultry, pigs, and they've also got diagnostic and genetic services. So it's a, it's all around comprehensive veterinary business. And so this stock listed on the market in, oh, look, I think it was 2015, and it had a, had a really, really rough start. I think it fell something like 80% over the first four years. And but look, that doesn't mean it's necessarily all over for a company. You see a lot of companies have a bad start, mm. but then turn themselves around and do well. So you look at the fundamentals of this stock and it's, it's um, gross up, oh, its revenues up 6% over the last financial year, net profit after tax is up something like 30%, they've got margin expansion, and they're unrolling their, continuing to roll out their, um, their products and services. For example, they just bought a, a veterinary operation in, in Dubbo, so they've aimed for a, a fast-growing regional area, and uh, it's like it's part of the company's growth strategy. So look, it's ticking some fundamental boxes, and but it's come to my attention because of the uh, because of the momentum. So it's starting to trigger the the trending indicators, which yeah puts it on on my radar. And uh, it's one of those stocks which you know. This is the thing with these smaller stocks, if you get in the right ones and uh, you, you, you stick with them, like yeah. I take a medium term approach, maybe sure. one to, to three years, and if you can stick with some of these ones, the ones that go can really run a long way and you can get some really strong portfolio return. Mm -hmm. But it's all risk management. If, if this stock doesn't pan out, I won't be hanging around for three years to find out. Understood. It'll be, you know, rotate the capital into, into something else. Jason, do you apply any of your modelling to the US or some of the, the go-go momentum stocks like a Tesla, for example? Would you have 
Would yeah, the, the, the strategies are completely transferable to any right. market. I've sure. used them to trade commodities, international yep. shares. Yeah. My focus at the moment is uh, the local market. Look, I came to the conclusion years ago that there are more markets and more opportunities than I have either capital or time to follow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I've, I've just, I like the local time zone and uh, yeah, <laughs> so I focus on the... Uh, but I would imagine you're modelling. But something like Telsa, which I heard you talking about earlier, yeah, yes. it's been it's been a you know the, the classic trend following stock. Yes, it it broke higher. Yep. Um, I don't remember the timing of it all. I need the chart in front of yes. me. Yes. But you had a clear breakout, and yep. there's been no reason to sell. I know people have mm. been shorting it all the way up, mm. but that's fighting against the the trend, and it's. Finding out it's the trend, it's a, it, it, it just often ends badly because the market can yeah. go run longer than people can imagine. So uh, I'd trade something like that. I'd let the, let the stock run. Yeah. I'd have risk management strategies to, to get me out when the stock turns lower yeah. rather than yeah. preempting the a top. And do any, does your modelling actually enable you to go short? So, I mean, once that momentum peaks and it starts that classic parabolic kind of blow off phase, and then it reverses violently oftentimes. If we go back to 99, 2000, I'm sure you were mm. active in the markets at that time. I mean, some of those classic reversals were you know, of historic uh, scale. Yeah, yeah. So would your model then say go short at those levels or just get you out? Uh, initially get out. Like back in the um, back in the, the the dot com boom, I was all for preempting tops back in those days, right. and uh, learnt my lessons that I'm better right. to to wait for a market to actually peak and roll over, yes, and then get in as momentum to the downside continues to build, and again use risk management strategies to get out if uh, if things reverse, and then let the market fall as it does. So I don't actively trade stock short. Uh, the the risk reward profile is not as good as trading long. Mm. Like most of the stock can fall is 100%. Most of it can rise is infinite. Right. So it's I asymmetric. It is. Asymmetric. So it's very much looking for that 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 asymmetric yeah. angle, as you, as you say. Yes. And that comes better on the long side than the, yeah. uh, than the short side. Yeah. But it can be good looking for those indicators to know what stocks to stay out of. Yes. So rather than try to pick the low in, in yeah. AMP over the last few years, the trending indicators have been strongly down. Stand back, let That's it fine. fall, wait for it to base, wait for it to turn higher, should that happen. And then yeah. the, the risk reward starts to move into your favour. It's a wonderful complement to risk management strategies, isn't it? That form of, te I call it technical analysis. Mm. Yours is slightly more sophisticated. I'm, I'm quite simple in terms of my chart analysis, but I blend both technical and fundamental analysis, but I'll never do anything unless I start feeling comfortable about what the charts are telling me, because that to me is the most powerful signal. It is. It's um, you know, Jeremy Grantham, the, the value yes. investor. He, he talks about the curse of the value investor and being yes. uh, of yeah. being being early. Mm -hmm. So this is a great thing about the the, the yeah. price action approach. It's yeah. about waiting for the price to be moving in your favour, mm -hmm. and then if you have a great value story, go in then. And yeah. look, it can save you waiting for three years. I remember the old Pacific Dunlop back in the nineties. Uh, the, the the investment bank I worked at, the fund management were very keen on that. Mm. And they said there's a great value story, but when I looked at the the, the mm. charting profile of it, mm. it um, the stock was still in a it, it had come out of the down downtrend. It was in a in a holding pattern, mm. but you don't know where a holding pattern is going to break. Is it upside or downside? Yeah. Turns out it was downside, and they end yeah. up exiting their position and uh, taking a taking a big That's loss. Right. Would have been better off waiting, watching for the price action, and then yeah. repositioning as it uh, as momentum was was on their side. I fully agree. Um, talk to us about another company then that has passed your algorithmic yes. tests. Yeah, another, another interesting one is a company called Matter Group. Now, it, chances are most people wouldn't have heard of it. Yep. It's, um, again, one of these weird and wonderful ones you find. Well, it's not so much weird, but it's one of these um, uh, wonderful out-of-the-box ones you find yeah. with the algorithms. It's um, capped at around $195 million. Uh, gets in the All Ordinaries, not in the ASX 300. So again, probably on the fringes for, for most people in terms of finding it. It's, um, it's focused in the resources sector. And what they do, they, they service uh, the heavy equipment. So, you know, the, the, the diggers, the, um, the trucks, plant, all the, all the big stuff that makes a, makes a mining operation work. And uh, 1,400 people in the company, they've got, got a, um, uh, operations in uh, Australia, Asia, the Americas and Africa in the big mining areas. And it's, uh, it's really interesting because what I've been seeing over the last, probably the last six months, there's been quite a lot of um, momentum triggers in, in resource stocks. And this is from BHP, Rio, mm, Fortescue, yeah. all the way down to the small caps and the micros. So it's not 
everything with a mine is going up by any means. It's still, you've got to find the right ones. But it is really looking like a, a, a hot sector for, for, for opportunities. Mm. And um, I think over the next, maybe the next one, two, three years, we could really see some interesting stuff in the resources sector with what's happening in, you know, worldwide mm. with infrastructure and mm. Um, mm. Um, modern monetary theory yeah. and all, all this sort of stuff. So I think there's a, a positive backdrop. Yeah. The, it's showing up in the momentum of a lot of stocks mm. and a company like Matter, which is, and um, you know, we talk about, you know, you buy the, the guys who sell the picks and shovels to the yeah. miners, you can make money doing that. Mm. These guys are going out and fixing the picks and shovels. <laughs> so if, yeah. if, if you get an uplift in that sector, yeah. it could be a good way, to, good way <coughs> to play it. Not only that, but when there is a turn in the economy mm. eventually, instead of going out and buying new ones, mm. everybody starts fixing their old picks and shovels, right? There you there go. You go. Do you agree give... with the assessment uh, about you know picking and choosing amongst these resources names as in, just because we're seeing this rotation from growth into mm. cyclicals, it doesn't mean all are created equal. Where do you look most favorably? No, I don't think they're all created equal, but I want to just really zero in on, on Jason's point here. I, I'm, I'm getting to feel, and I'd love to hear your perspective mm. on whether the charts are confirming this, that we could be seeing a bit of a commodity super cycle boom taking place here. We've certainly got the monetary and fiscal ingredients, we've mm. got the policy environment, and we spoke earlier, Nadine, mm -hmm. Which central bank is going to be the first one to raise rates? They don't want to go down in history as ruining the global economy. Politicians are now all populists and economic nationalists. There's no such thing as uh, um, any concern about deficits. Mm. So we've got politicians and central banks joined at the hip, all stimulating. We get a vaccine, hallelujah, we get takeoff. And surely that's the right environment for a commodity super cycle. I think you could be right. It's um, interesting. I saw a, saw a fascinating chart uh, not long ago. It was a ratio of um, of a yeah. commodities index to the yeah. S and P, yes. and it's at it's at multi decade lows. Mm. Yeah. And and you can see how cyclical these things are. Mm. That that um, real asset based uh, commodities will have um, periods where they outperform financial assets like um, mm. you know, S and P stocks, and then periods where they where they where they fall out of favour. And it just rolls, it rolls like the waves. Mm. And so now we're down in one of those troughs, and at some point, it almost seems inevitably at some point, timing's always, mm. you can never know mm. that, but it does seem like the, the risk reward is looking quite favourable. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting sector, I think, to watch. Mm. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on with the, like, um, are we going to be seeing inflation over the next few years? Do we have a, uh, yeah. is, are the markets setting themselves up for yeah. that with the way central banks now now handling every every crisis? It's it's really like pump the money in. That's yeah. been that's that's been the playbook for a long time, and yeah. it's worked. And yeah. they've been emboldened by the last last um, yeah. last bout of um, weakness we've had. Can't see that changing, and no. that has to be. I think that's probably a positive for for commodities. Yeah. Jason, we're starting to run a bit short on time, but uh, your last pick is one that uh, I know that a lot of people who are watching this program would know. Raise is also come on your radar at the moment. Raise Invest. Yeah, yeah, really interesting one. It's only only capped at seventy eight million dollars, so it's, you know, it falls well short of getting into the um, the all ordinaries. Uh, mm -hmm. It's um, it's a, a micro investment uh, business. So what what they've got? They've got a, an app that they're they're targeting to the mm -hmm. millennials. Um, and the idea is that you, they can, a user can trans automatically transfer small amounts of money from their, from their linked account into um, the, the investment yep. portfolio and then it goes out to ETFs. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got this really interesting feature where they call it Roundup. So every time you buy something, they round it up to the nearest dollar yep. and, the, and the change, the virtual change, then gets sent off to the ETF. So it's meant to be a, a, a simple and painless and easy Not way profitable. to... Not profitable. But you still, Not your yet. algorithms are still saying it's a go, and Not that's momentum. Yeah, so that, that's how it's come to my attention, yeah. through the momentum. Yeah. And it's not profitable yet, but they've got 450 million under management, it's up 30% on, on last year, and these businesses are just so scalable. Mm. And uh, if they can get, get, you know, continue to grow locally, get traction in Indonesia and Malaysia, yeah. well then you can never know with these things. But you know, again, like with Avium, I'm not hanging around for three years to like I'm not wedded to the story. Yeah, there is a story there. It's an interesting story. Maybe it doesn't pan out. It doesn't pan out. I'll, I'll be out. You're I'll out. rotate into something else. But the thing is, you've got to get these ideas before they appear in the ASX 200 because mm. by then they're a lot higher. Mm. So this is the beauty of using the algorithms to find them All early right. when they're you know, no one knows them. Jason, um, uh, you know, again. 
Am I going to say it this time? I could sit and listen all day, but we've got APM Health, AHX, MAD for Matter Group, and RZI for Raise Invest. Our viewers will thank you. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. It. A lot of fun.